Hi, and welcome to this uh, solo AAR of Infamy, Infamy, the uh, latest uh, Two Fat Lardies set of ancient rules for large-scale skirmishes. You may have heard of these, proving quite popular at the moment. Uh, this is my second game of this. Uh, I had a, a quick tester game of it uh, a while ago, and I'm just going to play another game of it, uh, just basically to uh, show you how the rules work. Uh, I'm still new to it, I'm still learning, so I'm probably going to make quite a few rules mistakes as we go through. I'll try to correct myself uh, if I do. Uh, but hopefully you'll enjoy this game. It's uh, based on uh, my forces, which are based on Gauls and early Imperial Romans, uh, which in turn are also based on Asterix and Obelix comics. And this game is set around that, with the Romans trying to burn down the, uh, the indomitable Gauls village. So, I'll show you the table, I'll show you the forces, uh, and talk about some of the other bits and pieces of the game before we get started. So here we have the forces that are in play. Uh, these are both about 100 points worth of figures uh, in the game rules. We've got the Gaulish Tribal Levy, there's two units of 10 men each. Uh, these are generally armed with spears. Uh, they're commanded by a level 2 leader, that's his chap here. They've also got six skirmishers, slingers, over here. Uh, so they're their missile troops. Uh, they have uh, they don't they have a uh, supernumerary leader, so they're uh, a, a, an entity on their own. They also have three groups of ten warriors, uh, and also a group of ten elite warriors. Uh, these are commanded by Asterix and Obelix. You can see here, uh, Asterix being the level three leader, Obelix being a level two leader, and then on the Roman side we also have the. Uh, <coughs> this is the auxilia. These have a uh, supernumerary commander, so he is part of that group. They also have, uh, as part of this bigger group of legionaries, they've got two sets of eight legionaries, so 16 in total, plus the veteran legionaries as well. They also have their centurion, uh, who is uh, is called army surplus, uh, centurion army surplus, and their optio give us a bonus. Uh, they also elected as well to pay for uh, an Exploratoress, which means that they can uh, hopefully close down a Barbarian ambush point. So uh, I'll show you some of the other bits and we'll get on talking about the rest of the table. So similar to other Lardy's games, we have Force Morale. I've already rolled for this. The goals in blue here have got 9. The Romans are starting with 10. Uh, you basically just roll a d6 and it gives you however many uh, your Force Morale you start with. When this reduces to zero, then the game is over. Your force is broken. Again, very similar to most of the Lardy games. Uh, we also have here the game deck. Uh, so this is played on cards. You can play it with tokens as well. I've got these tokens, but I prefer the cards, I think. And this is basically the leaders that are part of your units here. So these are all the different leaders that are actually in the game. Uh, red being Roman, blue being... Uh, barbarian, uh, so there should be yes, there's four, four leaders for the barbarians and three for the Romans. We also have this card, the Tempest Fugit card, which basically ends the turn uh, for uh, temporarily, and then only a few other things can happen. So we will shuffle that each turn and then draw the top card, and then that leader can activate and activate troops around him. We also have as well these Signa cards. And each player starts with six, so these are their goals, and the Romans obviously the same again. They're just uh, cards with the Signa symbol on them. And these are used uh, to activate your troops to do various bits and pieces. So, for instance, uh, the Romans could use their A Signa card to throw their pilar or their javelins. They could use a Signa card to put their shields up. Uh, the Barbarians can use them to put, get into a... Uh, into a shield wall, they can use them to ambush from points, which I'll talk about in a second. And when you use them, these actually just go back into the game deck itself and discard into there, and then become part of the game deck, and then they can only use them when they come out again. The difference here being that the Barbarians can only use their Signa cards when their leader has been drawn. So they can only use them when the leader is, is actually uh, doing something already. The Romans can use Signa cards pretty much at any point in the turn until the Tempest Fugit card has been took, uh, pulled. This is because the Romans have got Drill, so that gives them a slight advantage. 
but the warriors, the uh, the barbarians, have got uh, what's called fervor, which we'll talk about here during as the game plays. But basically, it just makes them better fighters and quicker movers. So that's how he plays, pretty simply in a turn. We also have these, the infamy cards as well. Uh, these are basically, I suppose you could call these um, fate or uh, I don't know, uh, random events cards. Uh, each player is dealt one at the start of the turn. So the Romans have one. They have Conspiratory and the Gauls have Deceiver. Now these have different actions on them. So the Deceiver, it says, a shadowy figure advises you to prepare for a fight. As a result, one group, mob or formation, may throw an additional round of Javelin or Pylum. So that's actually probably better for uh, the Romans, but the Gauls have got it. And the Romans have got Conspiratory. Uh, gold persuades, uh, persuades an enemy to join the cause. One enemy ambush or deployment points may be removed from play. Alternatively, a friendly ambush or deployment point may be moved up to 1d6. So that's actually perfect for the Romans because they want to get rid of these ambush points. So they may play that straight away, actually. But these can be played at any point in the game. Uh, they will possibly come back to, into your hand uh, during a random event. Uh, but it's, it's quite probably quite unlikely, but... Uh, they're there just to basically mix up the, the game for your opponents. Obviously, in a two-player game or two or more player game, you wouldn't know what your opponent is holding. Uh, you'd only know your own infamy card. But we're playing solo, so everything's on the table. And speaking of the table, here it is. So this is the Roman side, looking across to the Gauls. Uh, you can see here it's quite forested up here. What I did was I did a random table creation with... Uh, a chap who goes by the handle of I would like to rage. He has a, a random table generator uh, on his website. I'll put a link to it in the description below so you can use it as well. And this is the table I came up with quite nicely. It's uh, a nice, nice range. So what we've got is the habitation here of the Gaulish village. Another habitation down here. Uh, this is Asterix's house and Ublix's quarry uh, to show that with some fields. And then we also have some patches of wood over here, uh, a hill, some more wood, some more wood over there. Uh, over here we have the marsh, so I'll just use some of this low-lying terrain, uh, and another hill at the back here. What you may have noticed as well, I'm sure you have, is there are these individual figures dotted about. These are my Gaulish uh, ambush points. Now there's you put six of these out and then number them secretly as the goals uh, and the Romans get a chance to scout them uh, however they only get a chance to scout them if they've got cavalry or other uh, other different units units that I don't have as part of my force uh, but I also pay for an exploratore so that is basically uh, somebody who can scout out a barbarian uh, point the barbarians on the other hand can uh, screen them, their ambush points, again only if they have cavalry or chariots or things like that. They don't, so they're unable to, so the Romans will be able to just basically uh, try to get rid of one of these uh, these ambush points. And also don't forget we've got, the, uh, we've got the card as well, which allows us, the infamy card, which allows us to remove a Gaulish uh, ambush point as well. So I'll show you how that's done. And we'll get on with that, and then the game can start. Oh, just one more quick thing to mention. Uh, the dots here, the dot here and here, is the Roman uh, deployment zone. So the Romans get a 24-inch by 6-inch rectangle to deploy. I rolled for this. This is where it ended up. The barbarians have one. Theirs is over on this back corner. I haven't marked it because I remember where it is anyway. Uh, and judging by my test game, they didn't really use it. But this is a point that you can retreat to and also your units will come onto the board from. The Barbarians can't put an ambush point uh, anywhere within 12 inches of this. This is automatically scouted by the Romans. So this is why they're a little bit further back than here. So anyway, let's get on with the ambush points, see if we can get these removed or not. So if the Romans and the Barbarians both had cavalry and the screening and the scouting points, they would... The barbarians would number each of their uh, their ambush points between one and six, 
and then they would note secretly which ones they were screening with their cavalry. In this case, the barbarians don't have any cavalry, so they can't screen anything. Uh, the Romans, uh, they don't have any cavalry either, so they can't scout anything, but they did pay for that extra exploratores at the start of the game, so he gets to uh, check out one ambush point. And also, don't forget, we also have the Conspiratora uh, card as well, which that will immediately uh, take away one deployment enemy uh, ambush or or uh, deployment zone. So we'll play that, and the Romans will take away this one here in the forest, and then they will attempt to scout the with the exploratories uh, the uh, ambush point here at the village because the village is there. Uh, main goal. Actually, speaking, thinking about it, let's swap it round. We'll take out the village with the card, so that is gone, and then they're going to try to attempt to scout out this one here. So what happens is, we roll a dice, the barbarians aren't screening it, if they were the Romans wouldn't be able to scout it, they're not screening it, so we roll a dice. Uh, on the roll of uh, 1 to a 4, it just becomes a normal deployment zone, uh, but on a 5 or a 6 it's actually removed from the table. So the Romans are looking to get a 5 or a 6 uh, using the two fat lardies uh, uh, dice tower. A little bit of uh, product placement there for you. So we'll check this. So they're looking for a 5 or a 6. Oops, let's roll it in the tower. Uh, it's a 1. So that stays on the board but it's just a normal deployment zone. So what I'll do is I'll put a sheep by it just to show that it's not as threatening. So that is pretty good for the Romans. It means that barbarians can't launch an attack from there. They can bring troops on from there, but they can't actually attack once they come on. Well, that's it. That's the start. So let's uh, crack on with the game. It's all set up, and uh, let's see who gets the first turn. Right, so we draw the first card, and it is Barbarian Leader 4. And the Barbarian Leader 4 is the Tribal Slingers. So that would be the six slingers. Now they can either come on or they can wait. Okay, I've decided to bring the slingers on. I was I, I thought about waiting, but let's get them on and, and uh, get them ready to, re ready for action. So these guys have deployed. They've deployed from this point here. Uh, they can deploy up to 12 inches away from their uh, deployment zones or ambush zones. So this is where they have come on. So they're just basically waiting right in front of the Romans. Uh, and hopefully they'll be able to do some slinging when the Romans begin their advance. Okay, the Barbarians don't want to use any of their Signa cards at this point, so what they'll do is they'll just play, we'll play the next card. That's Leader 1, so that is actually Asterix himself. He comes on. Uh, he is coming on with his uh, Ambaxtoy Noble Warriors and some other Warriors. However, I'm going to hold those back simply because... I want them to give them the advantage of ambushing, because there's no point having them just milling about on the table for now. Uh, so I'm going to hold them back, so we'll pull the next card. Okay, we've got the Optio, uh, the Roman leader too. So he can either come on and bring on his, on some of the legionaries. However, that would mean that the Centurion uh, army surplus is still stuck behind. So again, I think I'm going to wait... Uh, these will make more difference when the game moves on. Uh, leader 3 is the Roman Auxiliary. He's the uh, Supernumeran leader, so he is part of the team. So I could actually bring that on, that's probably a good thing. I'll, and I'll probably threaten those slingers as well with them. So let's get them set up. Roman warriors will deploy up to 6 inches from their deployment zone. I'm sorry, I did... Uh, I should have remeasured the actual Roman deployment zone is a little bit further back than I had it earlier. Uh, it's 6 inches by 24. So these are coming here. They've come in 6 inches away from their deployment zone edges. And I've put them here because they want to be threatening the slingers over here. Uh, they're already in range of those anyway, but they want to get in close and try to move them away so they're, they're not causing a threat for the flanks of the advance over here against the village itself. What I'll do here is I'll take you through a round of, of the cards as they come through so we can talk about them, uh, but in future turns, just to speed up the video and, and not watch you uh, watch me pulling cards, I will, uh, I'll do this off, off camera. But just for now, we'll, just, we'll go through the cards and see what we get. Uh, so, leader one. 
Uh, that's for the Romans, the red. Uh, that is perfect for them because that means that they can then bring on their group uh, with their two attacher leaders and their legionaries. So let's get them on the board. With their leader one card, the Romans have brought on their centurion, also their optio as part of this group, uh, and their three units of legionaries. So they've got the, the veterans at the front, obviously, and then the two legionaries at the back, the normal legionaries. Uh, these are in what's called line uh, formation, which doesn't mean that they're in a line, but they're in the line of battle. So this is when they're joined together. Uh, they haven't moved this turn, but if they had, they could use a step-out command by spending one of their Signa cards, and they would get to move an extra D6. I think they pay, pay two Signa cards to step out, uh, and they extra, an extra D6 of movement on top of what they've moved. But these are just deployed, again, up to six inches from their deployment zone. So these are here on this side of the this little village here, and they're heading straight towards the village itself. Uh, obviously, we've still got a threat from these two points here, this one is only a deployment zone, so a deployment spot, so that's not so bad. Uh, but we do have an ambush point here as well. So you never know, we may get some trouble from that. But the uh, plan is to burn the village down, so let's see if they can get on with that. And our next card is the Barbarian Leader 2, so that would be Obelix, with anything he wanted to bring on. Again, at this point, I think it's probably still too early. I'm going to let the... The Gauls really want to let the Romans get a little bit further into the field before they probably ambush them uh, and they, they, they bring on their forces. So at the moment, I'm going to leave that off and move on to the next card, which is, that's the Tempest Fuji card. Uh, on the Tempest Fuji card, that basically ends the turn. Uh, it doesn't mean that anybody who is on the board who hasn't moved doesn't get to move. They do now get to do something. Uh, you can spend Signa cards... Uh, for any units that are on the board that haven't activated this turn and get them to do something as well But they can only move fight or throw missiles. They can't do anything like rally rallying shock or anything So that is basically the end of the turn. We've obviously got the one last card and just to show you I'm not cheating here That's the barbarian leader three. So that will be the tribal levy They would have been interesting to bring on maybe to face off against the Roman auxiliary, but uh, they didn't get to come on this turn, so you never know, they might do next turn. So what we do is we shuffle the game deck, and again what I'll do is I'll just turn the first card over just to show you how it all works. If any Signa cards have been played in this turn they would have gone into this deck as well. When they come out in future turns they're just handed to the player and then they're put in play, uh, they will go back into the deck at the end of that turn, but they can be used throughout that turn as well. So, if that makes sense, I hope. So, let's just see what we get. First up, it's the Tribal Levy, uh, just as we were talking about. So, they did get a turn. So, we'll bring those on, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to harass the uh, the Roman Auxiliary. So, the Gauls have brought on their Tribal Levy. They can deploy up to 9 inches from a deployment point. So, from there to there. But they have to be, uh, because they're not ambushing, they have to be at least 4 inches away from the closest enemy units and they are just on four inch from there so they're nine inches from that point but four inches from the roman auxiliary they haven't got any further because they've just come onto the board they need to be stopped still for a full turn and have it instilled in them uh, so they are just a unit at the moment however they're quite a threat to the romans but the romans are pretty good fighters uh, as well and they're also armored more armored than the the tribal levy but we'll see who strikes first. The Romans have also got their peeler as well, don't forget. So straight after the levy have, uh, have been activated, the Roman leader 3 has been activated. So his uh, supernumera leader has, has been called out. Now this shows you basically how the Romans uh, will fight. They are going to use a Signa card to throw their peeler at the barbarians and then they're going to attack so that then goes into the discard pile uh, and will be shuffled into the deck and drawn out the romans have two rounds of peel off fight uh, uh, to to throw so they will throw uh, their first lot and they're going to throw all eight of them straight at the uh, barbarians who are within range and they're going to need Four to sixes to hit, and there's eight of them being thrown. 
So we take eight dice, four to six, and they're throwing them uh, basically into there. So the hit, all the hits are going to be spread across the barbarians. So four to sixes. Oh, that's not great. That's only one hit. So let's just leave that in there. And then the armour of the barbarians is light armour. They will be killed on a six or take shock on a three to five. So that's a kill. Uh, let's see which unit there, which he's actually gone, gone into because there's a leader attached to this particular one. So uh, he may be killed. So let's have a look. Uh, one, two, three, it's this unit. Four, five, six. This unit. That's the easiest way to do it. Four, five, six. So it's in here. There's no particular personalities in there. The guy is killed, and that's it. He's taken off. We remove one casualty. Then the Romans will use their next activation, uh, their actual activation, to attack against one of these. Uh, they can move up to two d six, and when just moving normally. So hopefully they'll be able to get them. They're within four inches, so there's a good chance that they're going to uh, make contact this turn. Yes, that's a nine. So nine inches. Now, they can either conform. Uh, because they're attacking uh, a formation of two uh, barbarian units, they have to conform to them. Otherwise, if they were a single unit, uh, it would be up to the defender to conform. Uh, who, the, the defender to decide who was going to conform to who. So the Romans have made contact uh, against this barbarian unit. The barbarian unit has its leader attached in this unit here. It is also supported on the side by this unit as well here. So what we will do is we'll add up the dice for the attack and defence. If one unit has four or more uh, times the amount of dice that the defender has, they automatically win and destroy the defending unit. I don't think that's going to be the case in this point, but we'll, we'll work them both out anyway. So we're starting with the Romans. They are they have got over fifty percent of their units because it's still obviously a full unit. So they start with eight d six. <clears throat> so we'll count these up uh, together: two, four, six, eight. The levy, on the other hand, uh, although they are still a full unit, they're levy, so they only start with six d six. We'll keep these separate and just add dice to them as we go along. So the way it works in close combat is you basically start with a, a sum. If you've got over 50%, you have a certain amount of dice. If you've got less than 50% in your unit, you have another certain amount of dice. Uh, but then you adjust these numbers by working your way through the list. So I'll just show you here on the quick reference sheet. So this is the list here. We work our way down and it goes from there. So we have uh, a leader in combat which is, uh, but he's only on the uh, barbarian side and he is a status two. So he gets two dice for each of his statuses. The bar, the Roman one doesn't count because he's super numerian, so he's not a leader as such. He's just one of the guys in the unit. We could add Signa cards at this point if we wanted to. Both of them are going to hold off for now. Uh, maybe at some point in the future they will. Right now they're just going to hold on to them. Or... No, let's, the Romans are going to chuck in another Signa card, because why ever not? So that's another one for the Romans. Drill troops in the open terrain with the enemy in front. The Romans are drilled, the, uh, the barbarians aren't. So the Romans get plus two per group. They've only got one group in there. That's the eight men, so they get plus two. Uh, each supporting group of 50% strength or more. This is a supporting group because it's side by side. Supporting group is anybody that's here, here, or here, uh, on the either flanks or on the rear. So that's supporting, so that gives the barbarians a plus three d6. So they're still, still building up. Uh, won the last round of an unbroken combat by a plus four or one. Neither of them did. Uh, then we have the two points of fervor on a fighting group. So uh, the Barbarians don't have any further. They would build that up as part of their turn, but they haven't done. There's no shock on either of these units yet. Uh, ferocious Charge. That gives you a plus D6, plus 2D6. That, again, is a Signa card that you would spend, or depending on how, how much it costs for your unit to spend that. 
uh, violent charge as well, or I, uh, I think it's uh, I think that's a typo on the quick reference sheet, but we are not having these. The enemy is braced or in shield wall in the first round only. That would minus two d6. Neither of them are in shield wall or braced. The barbarians would have to have their leader uh, ready them with a shield wall, whereas the Romans can just spend a Cigna card to brace their shields. So that's the difference they have as well. Group has shields up in the first round of combat. Nope, again, that's the Roman thing. Uh, the enemy on the higher ground or elevation. No. Cavalry against skirmishes in open order. No. Cavalry against closed order formation. No. And then attacks in the rear or flank or in march column and neither are. So this is how we've ended up with our dice. So the Romans have ended up with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. The Barbarians have got 3, 6, 9, 11. So although the Romans are actually outnumbered here, just a straight square on uh, face-off fight like this uh, shows you that they are pretty good at fighting because they are drilled professional soldiers. So we roll the dice. Fives and sixes are hits, a five is shock, a six is a shock and kill. Uh, and then we do the armour rolls, and then whoever has killed the most uh, of the opponents is the result, and then we will fight a second round. You will fight two rounds every time any unit is activated. Also at the end of the Tempest Fugit card as well, when that comes up, you will fight two rounds if neither of the units in the combat have been, uh, have been activated. So let's get on with this. The Romans... Enough waffle, more fighting. One, two. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six hits, of which two are kills, and all six cause shock. So we just saw that out in one second. The barbarians, on the other hand, they have only caused one shock. Sorry, two shock and one kill. First of all, all hits and shock are spread amongst the groups fighting. So in this case, the Romans take all theirs here. And they will take two shock and a kill on that unit. And two shock and a kill on that unit there. So we then test for the armour. Well, let's see first of all if it's actually on the leader. A roll of a one... And he is uh, the casualty. No, he's not. So it's just on one of the bog standard uh, village levy. They are wearing light armour. They will be saved on a six. So let's just do their test. Uh, no, so that's one of their village levy straight out. And then same again on this side. The other guy saved on a six. So no, another one is killed. So that's two killed. On the barbarian side, the Romans take their two art, a two shock, and they also have one hit as well. We, because it's a supernumerary uh, leader, we can ignore uh, a leader test because somebody else would just take over. And they are in medium armor, so a five or a six safe for these. So no, uh, that's a kill on the Roman side. So that is a net. So. It's either a draw or a plus one in the difference of the kills. You only check the kills, not the shock. So they now remain in combat unless shock exceeds the number of men in the warrior group and then they withdraw per point of shock or two inch if they're skirmishers or levy. Uh, and so in that case, the barbarians, they've only taken three shock, but they've still got you know nine men and eight men in each of these. So we then fight a second round of combat this turn. So again, we go back down through the, the list. We're starting the Romans. Let's just add these up together so we know what we've got. Romans are starting with their eight. The Barbarians, as we said, starting with their six. Again, if we want to chuck in any Signa cards at this point, uh, the Romans can do at least. Uh, there's a leader in combat. That's the Barbarian leader, so that takes them up to eight now. Not in, they're not going to add any Signa cards because you'd soon burn through them. The Romans are drilled troops in open terrain with the enemy in front, so they get their extra plus two for that. Uh, each supporting group of 50% strength or more. They still are 50%, so they're getting three. 
extra dice in there. As I say, these things soon build up. Uh, they won the last round of Unbroken Combat by plus one or more. So the Romans did. So they get an extra 2d6 for that. So they're actually winning the fight in this case. So they get an extra 2d6. There's no further. Uh, minus 1d6 for two, every two points of shock on each group. So there's actually... Uh, on the fighting group, so there's minus 1 off them. And the sports... Don't think that counts. I'm going to say it doesn't count. The Romans, they remove one for their two shock. Uh, I'll have to look that up, but I, I think it doesn't count because they're supporting, not not fighting. Um, <clears throat> no ferocious charges. Neither are braced. Neither have got shields up. They're not on higher elevation. And it's not cavalry against skirmish. And they're not attacked in the rear or the march uh, or in a march column. So let's again, let's have a look. We've got 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 for the Romans this time. And the Barbarians are on with 5, 9, 10. So the Barbarians are actually down. So same again. We roll our dice. 6 is the kills with shock. 5 is just shock. So let's see what the Romans end up with this time. Uh, not as good as before, but there is 2 kills in there. And one shock. So we'll just sort those out in a second. And the Barbarians, they're rolling back. And they haven't co caused a single hit. Nothing. Terrible. Uh, they really need some magic potion in them. So we've got three shock. The shock has to be split amongst uh, them evenly. There's three. So what we'll do is we'll give the extra one to this unit over here. And then it's going to be one kill on each of these units. So these will take... Their one shock, that puts them up to four. They're still okay. When you have the same amount of shock of a unit as figures in the unit, they will withdraw however many inches of shock they've taken. So these ones, again, these are up on five now. But they are still <clears throat> okay because they even when with this kill, they're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'll have at least eight men in there. So they're still okay. Uh, so we roll for that kill. Is it on the leader? A one it is. No. So it's just on one of the uh, normal blokes. They've got light armour. So they will save on a six. Otherwise it's another kill. So that is another kill. That's a five. So that's him off as well then. So the barbarians have lost three now. To the Romans one. So again just gives you an idea. You know drilled professional troops fighting against tribal levy with spears. The professional troops are probably going to come out on top. However, it's only a draw or a plus one difference between the two in the kills. So they remain in combat, uh, but they don't for the rest of this turn because they've done their two rounds. Uh, if it was two or more difference in the kills, then the loser would fall back, uh, which would be a nice uh, little victory for the Romans. But they haven't won in this particular case just yet. So we've got leader 4 for the uh, goals, and it's the slingers. They are going to sling their slings at the front unit of this group here. Well, actually all of them. Uh, so they're going to just be throwing their slings over there. They've got a range of 24 inches, which is where they're well within. They're about 19 inches away, so they're well within. And we roll 1d6 for each one throwing. Uh, for a sling, they need a 5 or a 6 to hit. Slings actually minus 1 on the armour of the Romans, which is quite good because they're, they're heavy armoured. So let's see how many hits anyway. 5 or a 6. So this is uh, missile combat. So 2 hits. So slings will reduce the Romans' heavy armour down to medium armour. Uh, they will spread the hits between the front unit and the unit of the rear because the front unit is the one that's basically been fired at. It's the closest. Uh, so on a medium armour, a 6 is a kill, 4, 5 is shock, and 1 to 3 is a miss. So let's roll for the front unit, so that's 1 kill, and the second unit, that's another kill, so that's a kill on each of those. That's pretty good slinging right there. So I just rolled the uh, pulled the Tempest Fugit card, uh, which meant that uh, the Romans... The big units of Romans didn't get a chance to move because they didn't pull their leader. So what I did, I spent a Signa card 
on getting them to move forward. They roll 2d6 because they're in open order in open terrain. And unfortunately they rolled two ones. So they've only been able to move forward two inches. But at least they're slightly further forward. So now we gather up the cards, including all the Signa cards that we spent in the turn, and start the round again. Okay, the first card that we pulled this turn was uh, Leader 1, so that's Asterix. And he has basically commanded his entire group to charge out from this ambush point. So they are ambushing now. So he's brought everybody on, including his second in command, uh, Obelix, here. Because they're ambushing, they will get Fervor. Now, Fervor is the opposite of Shock, so Shock removes uh, movement and also uh, fighting ability, whereas Fervor adds it. But you can see here what's happened is they can only deploy up to 12 inch from their point, so they're 12 inches away from their deployment zone there. However, Fervor, by spending Fervor, they can actually get an extra 2 inches of movement. So we have to go through each of these groups and find out how much further each one of them got in the attack. So if they roll a 1 to a 3, they get 3 points. Uh, 4 or 5, they get uh, 4 points. And 6 or more, they get uh, 5 points of further. So quite simple. We're looking for higher numbers to be able to convert that into movement to be able to contact these Romans here. Otherwise, the further will... It won't disappear, but it, it'll. This, they really need to get into them straight away because... When the Romans are being ambushed, they can't spend any Signa cards. That also reminds me, it would have it costs the group two Signa cards to do this ambush. So they need to have Signa cards in hand to, to, to do this attack. So let's go through each of these, find out how much further they've got. The first group, uh, they are on four further. So I'm using blue dice to show the difference in further here. So that's these guys here. So they can convert some of those into inches to actually make contact, which is good. The group behind, they want to be high in their fervour as well. So let's see, one. Now, unfortunately, they've only got three, but they will at least be able to, should be able to convert those into enough to get them to at least follow up. Next up, this, this group here, they're also on three. Ooh, I think they might be a little too far away. You see, we really want to get into contact because that will, if we hit them in the flank, it halves their combat dice straight away, so it's pretty good. And the last group, their fervor is that's four as well, then, so that's not too bad. So now we remove fervor to get them to move forward. So let's see, the first unit is well, uh, that's just over two inches away, so I'm going to say they've got to spend two fervor to get into contact, so that drops their fervor down to two and they will come in and let's conform them with those so that's attacking those two units these are no longer in formation because they've been hit in the flank so we just slightly separate them just to show that they are no longer supporting one another uh, but we will be attacking into these two units so they'll get hits spread across them these ones they will have to reduce their further by one as well to get in behind, but let's just do these first of all. Now these are four inches away, so again, they have to reduce it by two. So they're down to one, so they can actually get in as well. So we'll jump those in. Now we are being supported by the rear, from the rear by both of these units here, uh, but we're not, they're not lending support to one another, so they are getting supported from behind. So let's just drop their further down, so they need to drop it down from... 4 to 2 because they're moving basically the same same distance so they're also in and then these ones as well these will drop down to one further from their three so you can see already these have now got less further than when they initially attacked so you've got to really weigh up when to attack and I was think I was just thinking that the Romans are probably getting starting to get a little close and because this is only a deployment zone not an ambush zone this was probably the last chance that the uh, the Gauls would have to actually get in and do an ambush at this point, because all the other ambush points are way too far away. So, uh, let's have a look at the combat now. Just one more thing for the ambush. I did forget, because these are ambushing from a marsh, which is a low-lying terrain, if they were coming out of the woods or hills, uh, they would pay two uh, Signa cards for 
any number of units to attack because they are attacking from low lying terrain, i.e. marsh, uh, they have to pay two for one unit to attack, <clears throat> but then they can add any number of units after that. So they will, they've added three units to it, so they will spend three Signa cards. So in total, that's cost them five Signa cards to do this ambush uh, because of where they're coming from. Unfortunately for the Gauls, that leaves them with only one Signa card left at the moment. They could use that to turn to to have an aggressive attack, which would give them an extra two d6. Uh, but we're still only the first card in this turn, so they might want to hang on to it just in case they want to do something else later on. So, at the moment, I'm going to hang on to it because they've, they've still got a huge advantage over the Romans at this point. <clears throat> and as I said, this is a flank attack on the Romans, so they. I've broken their formation up so they don't, they're not supply, uh, supplying support to each other. Uh, however, these two units are being attacked by this unit of Gauls, so they will spread their hits between them, whereas this one will take the full force of the hits from these Gauls here. But these have got the less uh, fervour anyway. These have got a bit more. Um, what will happen in an ambush is the first two rounds are fought like this, sorry, uh, in a flank attack. The first two rounds are fought in this situation unless the defender causes more kills on the attacker then they will turn to face them for the second round. So this is the chance, the real good chance for the Gauls to actually smash the, the hell out of these Romans at this point. So let's go through both of them, uh, both of these uh, different uh, combats work out how much, uh, how many dice they've both got and then we'll go from there. So, we're starting with these chaps here. These are elite warriors. These are the uh, Gaulish elite. So they are starting with 10 dice immediately. So let's just add those together. We've got 10, 10. So that's their 10. They are fighting against the Romans. Who are, who are uh, again, elite warriors at the front, and also warriors. So they're actually fighting against 18 dice, but I don't have that many dice, so what I'm going to do is half that immediately. So we'll put these as a separate, because we know... Uh, so that brings them down to 9. See, so already the uh, the effect of a flank attack is, is really showing. The uh, warriors have already got 10 against 9 even though they're fighting against an elite warrior set and an another warrior set as well there. So, let's go through the goals first, and then we'll go through the Romans, and then half their scores, and we'll see what we've got. So we've got a leader in combat, which is Asterix here. Uh, he's a level 3, so that's 3 dice extra. Uh, they're not adding any Signa cards. They're not drilled troops in the open. They have a supporting unit with 50% strength or more, so this is this one here, they're supporting them. They can't get support from these because they are supporting them, and they can't get support from them because they are fighting. If this unit didn't exist, they would be able to draw support from at least these two here. But they're getting 3d6 anyway on top of their, uh, their, normal, uh, their normal attack. They haven't won a round of combat. For every two points of fervor on the fighting group, they get an extra dice. So they have actually got two fervor on there. So that's another dice on there as well. Uh, there's not a ferocious charge, no aggressive charge either, aggressive attack. Neither of those. They're not paying for them. You have to pay cards for those. The enemy is not braced or a shield wall. When you attack in the flank, uh, you are not able to. Uh, sorry, when you're ambushed, you are the opponent is not able to play any Signa cards to do any drills. So the Romans are literally caught in the open. So the uh, enemy has no shields up. They're not on higher ground. Uh, the cavalry. There's no cavalry involved in this. And then, obviously, we're not attacking in the flank or rear. So let's see what the uh, Barbarians have got straight away. They've got 6, 12, 15, 17. So let's work out the Romans. As I said, we've already halved that from 18 down to 9. But they've got a leader in combat because he's uh, there. So he's 3. So we'll add that on. Uh, they are using no Signa cards. They're... Drill troops in the open terrain, but the enemy is not to the front, so they don't get their bonus for that. 
There's no supporting groups because again they're attacked in the flank. They haven't won a round of combat. Oh sorry, there is another leader there as well, so that's another two dice because he's in there. But they will possibly become uh, casualties if there are any casualties inflicted. Uh, there's no fervor, there's no shock on them. Uh, this is not a charge or aggressive charge or anything. They're not braced or a shield wall, they don't have the shields up. They're not on higher ground or elevation. And also, uh, they are being attacked in the flank or the rear, so they remove half of their dice. So we got we had 18 originally, plus the 5 is 23, so that halves to 11.5, but in infamy you round down, you don't round up, so that becomes 11. So we've already got, what, 9 there, 10, 11. So the barbarians, how many did we say they've got? 6. Uh, 12, 15, 17 against uh, 11. So there's a good chance they're going to come out quite well on this one. So let's have a roll and see what happens. Uh, this probably will be even better against the rear ranks, but let's just see what, what happens with these guys first of all. Okay, we're looking at fives and sixes, and I can already see there's quite a few in there. So we'll get these out and we'll see what their casualties are. So, okay, so that's... Two, four, six, uh, four kills, and six shock. So that's going to be uh, shock on each of the on each of the units, and then two kills on each as well. We'll roll those in a second when they've done their fighting back. So let's see what happens. This is the Romans fighting back. Again, they need to kill more than the barbarians here because then they can turn to face them. So they've caused three kills and three shock on that unit, on both units, because again they're spread between them. So they'll take two on the front, one kill on the back, uh, two shock on the front, and one, well, four shock on the front and shoot two shock on the rear. So now we have to roll for the defence, for the kills. The shock will immediately go on anyway. So we'll just put those on now. So the Romans will just take three shock and three shock. So let's get rid of those five so we can ignore those. So that's there on their units. The barbarians, because they've still got fervor, they take their fervor off before they take shock. So that is reduced the amount of shock they take by two. So that uh, they only take two shock instead of four. So again, let's get rid of those five so we know. And over here, they've got one further, so we take that off. So that's the one, and then they are given that extra shock on top of that there. So that's how the shock and the further works. Uh, the barbarians are able to absorb it a little bit more so than the uh, than the <coughs> than the, the the Romans, which is quite nice, especially when they got further. So let's now look at the kills, and then we can work out who has actually won the combat. The noble warriors have got medium armor, whereas the warriors have got light armor. Uh, the Romans have all got heavy armor. So let's do the, the Roman heavy armor first of all, because this is their save. They need four, five, or six, and they're saved. So, uh, first of all, I need to roll to see if it's the leader. One or a two it is. No, it's not. It's just on two of the, the guys. Four, five, six, and they're saved. So one saved, one is killed. So let's put the casualties there, so he's there. And then same again on the rear, let's see if it's the Optio, one or a two, and it is. Because you have to roll less than the amount of casualties on, on the unit. And that's a five, no it's not. So same again, four, five, six, and they're saved. So what have we got? One save and one kill. So, so far the Romans have had two kills on theirs. Now the Elite Warriors, they're saving on a 5 or a 6 because they've got medium armour. So same again. Uh, their leader is also in there. So 1 or a 2 and it's hit Asterix. No it hasn't, so it's just on the normal Warriors. And a, uh, a 1 to a 4 is a kill, so that's 2 of them killed. So, so far we're equal. And then we have the other Warriors at the rear. They are in light armour. There's no leaders with them. So a six and they'll save. No. So they have a take a kill as well. 
So despite hitting him in the flank with elite uh, warriors, the Gauls have actually lost that combat. But they've only lost it by one. Uh, so they remain in combat, even if the uh, <coughs> unless their shock exceeds the number of men, which it doesn't. So now what's happened, the Romans have won this combat, the first round of combat, because they've killed more than they've lost. So they are actually able to turn to face their enemy now. So, of course, they're going to do that. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this happens because there's no examples of this in the book. Uh, but I'm going to say that both can turn and contact, but there are there is nothing now supporting them. I'll just put these here just so we know what's happening here. So I'm going to say this is how they turn, rather than these turning in behind them. But we've still got their leaders are still part of these groups here. So let's just... Let's put the leaders in and stick them in the front line, shall we? So we know they're there. And let's stick our Optio in there as well. Just so they're all together so we know who's with who. And same with Asterix. Let's get him in the front line as well where he should be. Hopped up on Magic Potion. There he is. So, so now we have our second round of fighting. But this time the Romans are of that a obvious advantage now because they now have their full fighting weight to face against the barbarians. So we have to go through the uh, dice again to see how many we have. Then we've got the elite warriors. So they're starting with 10, so I'm starting with the Gauls. They're on a 10. Uh, they Let's do their addition, see what they've got. They've got their leader in combat, he's a level 3. Uh, there's no Cigna cards, they're not drill troops. They've got a supporting unit with still with 50% plus units in there, so that's another three. Uh, they didn't win the last round of combat. They have no fervor. However, they do have shock. So they've got two shocks, so that minus is one dice. No ferocious charges or anything like that. They haven't got a shield wall uh, and nothing else. So that's... They've suddenly dropped down now to what? 6, 12, 15 now. So they've actually lost themselves two, two dice for that attack. So the Romans. These now start with 18 because they've got 10 for these guys. And they've also got 8 for these guys. Uh, because they're both over 50% in strength. So we start with 18. I'll have to remember this because I probably haven't got enough dice here. So let's just have a look. 5, see if I've got enough. 5, 10... 15, 18, no, I've only got two extra dice there, so I'll just have to remember. So we've got 18, and then we get leaders in combat. So we've got our Centurion, we've also got our Optio, so that's two, so that's another five. There's no Signa cards added this time. I could add them, because they are now no longer being hit in the, in the side. I think they're still, maybe they're still under ambush, so I think at this point they can't, they can't add any Signa cards. Uh, but... They are drill troops in the open with the enemy in front. And this is 2d6 per, per unit. And there's two units involved in this. So that's another four dice on top of what they had. Uh, they won the last round of an unbroken combat by plus one or more. And they both did. So that's another 2d6 per group. So that's another 4d6. Wow, the Romans are really jumping up here. They have no fervor. However, they do have shock. And both of them have three. So for every two points of shock, you remove a dice. So that's two dice off. Uh, there's no ferocious charges or aggressive uh, actions or anything. They're not braced. There's no shields up. They're not in a higher ground elevation. There's no cavalry involved and they're not attacked in the rear. So they have 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29 dice in total. So let's roll these first and then we'll add the 18 dice to the Romans there. As I say, the Romans, once they get into these uh, fights, they are... Pretty uh, pretty aggressive. So let's have a look. So we're looking at fives and sixes for kills. So we've got quite a few here. That's not a bad number, actually. That's uh, four kills and one shock. So we'll sort those out in a second once we've done the, the Romans. So I need another 18 dice. Two, four, 
6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. It's practically all of my dice here. Let's have a look. And again, certainly again, fives and sixes. See what we've got. Oh, it's not that great actually. One, not as good as it probably could have been. One, two, three, four. A lot of shock. Uh, yes, that's it. So what have we got in there? We've got. Let's separate these out. We've got six, six. So four kills and six shock. Wow. So it's ten hits in all, which is double what the barbarians had at least. Uh, but obviously um, not as many as they could or probably should have done. So we'll separate these out again. So the barbarians take two on the front, two on the back. Uh, these are these were all shocks, so uh, three on the front ranks, so five in total, and three on the rear ranks, so five in total for them. And again with the bar, uh, with the Romans, we separate it between the two, so there and there, and then there's one extra shock, and uh, it really makes no difference. So we'll put it onto this unit here, right? So let's add on the shock. So that, they've already got one, so adding on that five gives them six. So that's not great straight away, but they still have quite a lot of men in there, so they might, they'll probably not uh, fall back. Here we've got another five added on. They've already got two, so that's now putting them up to seven. So that's their seven shock. Uh, the Romans, they've got two, so we'll add that on. That's five. You can reduce shock by when a leader activates and they basically take it down. Similar again in a lot of other Lardy games. Uh, they have three. They've got three shock there, so they adds that up now to six. Right, what we'll do is take that off. Then we're going to check for leader casualties. I do apologise. We actually wait until we've got the the leaders uh, until we've got the casualties the killed off and then we roll for the leader so he's actually got less chance of being hit so what we do now is we go through each of these taking their uh, armor saves and then we'll check if the leader is the one who is hit so first of all the romans they've got two four five six and they're saving this is for the elite uh, one save one kill so now we check to see if the leader is the one who is killed so on a one he is no he's not so Let's line up our dead there. So we've got our second unit, same, same again, four, five, six. Uh, so we've got six and a two, same again. One is killed, one isn't. Is it the leader? Is he hit? No, it's a four. So that's another Roman. And we then check on these guys. These are fives and sixes because they've got medium armor. Uh, so both of theirs are saved, so we don't need to do the armour check, so that's good. And then these guys are on six because these are light armoured. So let's see how many of these are killed. Uh, both of them. There's no leaders attached in here. One, two, so that's them taken off. So it's stalemate as it happens. Uh, the Romans, their shock is on six, but they've got six figures in that unit. Their shock is on five, and they've got two, four, six in that unit. Their shock is on seven. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in that unit. And their shock is on six, and they have seven in their unit. So the shock doesn't affect anybody. That was our second round of combat. So that ends that little combat there. Who's come out worst? I'm going to say, I think at this point, the barbarians have. Simply because... Now they're facing the Romans. Uh, it's going to be very hard to shift these because these are uh, elite warriors. So they're going to be pretty tough to, to break through now. And now they're facing them. So they're probably going to have to throw in a lot of Signa cards. Plus the Romans still have their turn as well. This is still only the first the first card of this, this turn. So the, the Romans could turn this round and, and fight back on them. Well, that's that one done. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of how... Uh, combat works at least. So let's look at this next one here. This again is going to be slightly different simply because we've got uh, these are warriors not elite warriors so these guys are going to be starting with uh, eight dice. This one I think 
the goals will probably come out on top because there's only one unit here, whereas there they, were, they had to spread, spread their uh, hits and shock through the two units. Had, had it been the other way around, you would have seen one massively reduced Roman unit there, um, had they only attacked one, one, route, one unit. But let's, uh, let's, let's go through this. So we've got a, a leader in combat, that's Oblix, he's uh, an extra two dice. There's no Signet cards, they're not drilled. There is a supporting unit of 50% strength or more. As I said again, these four, so they can't support uh, this unit here. Uh, they didn't win uh, uh, Unbroken Combat. For each two points of fervor on the fighting group, they've only got one, so they don't actually get a bonus for that, which is unfortunate. That's because they used it to move in. Uh, there's no other charges or anything. The enemy's not braced. They don't have shields up. They're not on higher ground. And the cavalry, uh, they're not cavalry against anybody, but they're not attacked in the rear or the flank. So these have ended up with 13 dice. Unlucky for some, some may say. So let's work out what the Romans have got. These are 8d6 they're starting with because these are just normal warriors. So we've got 6 there, 7, 8 there. Oh, sorry, too many there. So we've got 8 there. They don't have a leader in combat. They're not using any signal cards because they're ambushed. They're not drilled in open... Well, they are drilled, but they're not in open terrain with the enemy to the front because they've been hit in the flank. There's no supporting groups. They didn't win a combat. There's no shock on them, at least. There's no uh, charges or aggressive attacks. Uh, they're not braced or in shield wall. They don't have shields up. They're not on higher ground. Uh, they're not cavalry, but they are attacked in the rear. So they half their dice. So that brings them straight down to four. So as I said, the... The hit in the rear, uh, a rear or flank, is quite a big hitter when you get to that half their dice. So let's have a look at this. This is the goals. And depending on what they roll here, they should come out better. So we've got quite a few hits there. That's quite a good number. So we've got what, one, two, three kills and seven shock. So we'll sort those out in a second once we've rolled the Romans. Just put those there so I remember. And then they're rolling their four dice, fives and sixes. Not a single one, not even shock. So we've got three kills, seven shock. So let's put that shock on them straight away so we remember. This is probably not going to be great, but they do have a good armour save. But then don't forget, they've got an, a second round of combat as well in this. There's no leaders. These are just bog-standard legionaries. So four, fives and sixes, they're saved. <laughs> All three are saved. So they're, okay. So it's a draw, because you only count the kills. But, because it's a draw, it means that the Romans don't actually get to turn their flank. Uh, they don't get to turn against this flank attack. So the Barbarians get another round on the flank as well. But they don't get that bonus for, for winning. So let's just have a look. We'll go through it again. It's, uh, I know it's a slow process, but you know we, we, we're, we're all learning the game. So there's no leader. There's no signal cards. They're not drilled troops. There's a supporting unit, so that's another three. Uh, they didn't win the last round of Unbroken Combat because it was a draw, unfortunately. Two points of fervor on the fighting group. Same again. They're still only on one. There's no shock on them at least, and there's no charges, no uh, violent attacks. There's no shield walls, no shields up, not on higher ground, and they're not against skirmishes or anything. So, these have actually come out with 11. The Romans, they're starting on their 8. Let's see, we've got 7 there, that's their 8. <coughs> there's no leaders, no signal cards, they're not drilled in the open with the enemy at the front. There's no supporting groups. They didn't win the last round. There's, uh, now we go on to the shock. They've got seven points of shock. So for every two, they lose a dice. So uh, that becomes three off straight away. And then we don't have any of the other things. There's no charges, no aggressive attacks. They're not braced, shield walls. There's no cavalry, but they're attacked in the flank and rear. So we half it. And again, we said 
uh, in Infamy everything is rounded down, so they actually only end up now with two dice. So that's even worse. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so that's another four shock. That could have been better, but that means that the Romans will fall back because they now have more shock than troops. We'll do that in a second. So that's their four shock. I've added that on, so then they're on 11 shock. Uh, the barbarians, they roll their two. Uh, sorry, the Romans roll their two, and neither of those are hits. So again, no hits whatsoever. So now the Romans, uh, if it's a draw, they remain in combat unless the shock exceeds the number of men in the warrior group, and they withdraw one inch per excess uh, point of shock. Uh, they would withdraw two inch per point if they were skirmishers or levy. So they have 11 shock and eight men, so that means they are withdrawing three inches. So, overall, a bit of a draw really with that. The barbarians could move up to two inches to move into contact, but uh, there's no one to move into contact with, so they can't. Uh, they are, so basically the, the Romans have got beaten. They've not lost too many men. Uh, the barbarians came off worse here, but... We have a large number of barbarians here that will take on this fight anyway, so this might turn into a bigger multiple fight and it might get a bit messy. Uh, these are going to take a while to recover from their shock with 11. If they take any more, they'll keep getting withdrawn and they are right at the very back of the field here, so they may just withdraw off the field. So that's basically how large combats work. I think I've got most of it right. Um, I'm fairly sure there's probably something I missed somewhere in there. But it gives you an idea of how ambush points work and how an ambush against the Romans works as well. So let's move on. Right, the next card was Tempest Fugit, just to show you there. Uh, so this means that we can now go on to the combats afterwards, but uh, we have to spend Signa cards to do so. And the one who has the most Signa cards uh, in hand goes first. So the, <coughs> the Romans will do. They have three against the Barbarians one, so they've got a couple of combats that they want to use up their Signa cards on. So we'll go over and uh, do some of those. Okay, so it's the end of the turn. The Romans are now seeking to take advantage of the Signa cards. Uh, they want to use a Signa card to attack here, because these, were, uh, these weren't as a part of the, uh, the turn itself. So I basically I've had to rip all the dice for the Romans in this particular attack rather than go through it all again for you. And I'll just tell you they've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 26 dice against the Barbarians who have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 dice. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that they are now facing the Barbarians. So there's going to be a couple of rounds of fighting in this, so let's see what happens. So this is the Roman roll. Like a Roman road, but slightly different. Let me just get all the, the kills and shock out of there. Oh, this might do badly for the uh, Barbarians here, you know. That's quite a lot. Yeah, it's a goodly number. Okay, so they've taken 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, sure, 8, 12 shocks. So that's 6 on each group. We'll just have a look at that in a second. Uh, if, they, if the Romans had had 4 times more than the Barbarian dice, then they would have scattered them and won automatically, but they didn't. Uh, let me just number these up into the kills and shocks so we know what we've got. It looks like it's 4 kills. And the rest is shock. So I'll just put these together here so we know where they are. And then we move on to the Romans. Swap some of these dice because I had to, didn't have enough dice. So here we are. Swap these dice in. And these are fives and sixes for hits and kills. So that's only two kills on the Romans. But that's going to be two shock automatically. So that takes them up to six. And one of theirs 
will be killed and then another one shock on the other group still just on uh, they've just tipped over so that means they will withdraw but they also they also take one kill on each as well so let's sort those out uh, so the first one four five six and it's a save uh, and it's not saved let's see if it's the leader a one and it is no it's not so it's one of the guys so that means they will actually have to withdraw as well uh, because they now have less figures than they have uh, shock and over here we've got the kill so let's see if he's if he is killed no he's saved but he they are also uh, over their their shock is also over their number of figures they've got six figures and one shock so they will withdraw one point of x for each, one inch for each excess shock so they're back there and so are those so that means that the combat is over anyway no matter what happens with the barbarians I'll just leave that on. So they've only taken one kill. And the Barbarians. So they'll take two kills on the front. And six shock on each of these. So this, ooh, that's going uh, to hurt. So let's just get those shock on. Then we'll work out the kills and we'll see how many is left over after that. It looks like these Barbarians may be withdrawing. At quite a pace I'm going to say uh, so yeah we've got 12 so I mean that's more than the 10 that was in the group anyway and these have got 13 so again that's more than the 10 that were in the, the group originally so let's get rid of those shock dice and let's roll our kills so these are in medium armor fives and sixes this time for the saves so one is saved one is killed let's see if that leader is the killed one so it's a one and he is no he's not so another chap is off, so we'll put him there just so we can see what the result of the the uh, the fight is. And then over here, uh, we've got again the two, these are in light armour, so these need sixes to save. So that's two kills, there was no leader in there, so there, another two off. So the Romans have withdrawn anyway because of their... Their shock, excess shock, they just do that. The barbarians are also going to have to withdraw as well. Uh, the loser will fall back one point, one inch for each point of shock on the fighting group if they're warriors, or two or more if they're levy. These are all warriors, so they're going to have to fall back for one point of shock on each of these groups, so 13 inch and 12 inch. But they will get pushed back as part of theirs. So they're actually forced all the way back beyond their ambush points. So these are now way behind here. So yeah, they're, they're all pushed back together. So that really has hammered the goals there. Uh, not the result they were hoping for. Right, the goals uh, are taking uh, playing another Signa card. The end of the turn Signa card, it's their last one. Uh, but they're using their slingers to fire at the Romans over here. So they need fives and sixes to hit. Rolling six dice because of six men. That's only one hit. But it reduces the Roman armour down to medium. So on medium armour, a six is a kill, four five is shock. So it may do something. Uh, three uh, may do nothing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's nothing. They're okay. And then there's the final thing. The Romans are playing another Signa card. Uh, and they're going to put that in and they're attacking here uh, with this unit again against the levy. So they've got two, four, six, uh, eight, nine dice against the levy six this time. So let's see what happens with this. Uh, fives and sixes we're looking for. That's three hits, so that's two kills and a shock. Or oh, sorry, three shock in total, but two kills. And let's roll back with the six for the barbarians. That's a lot better. That's uh, four shock and two kills. So let's just work all these out. So the Romans now have up to six shock. We'll roll their two kills in a second. And the barbarians, they've got three, so they're going to put one on here. So that takes them up to five. 
they're all five shock and then the other two so we'll just get rid of that uh, the other two will go on here so that will take them up to seven they have eight figures in that unit so they're okay at the moment then it's going to be one kill on each so these are in light armor so basically a six is a save no but let's see if it's their leader on a one it is no it's not so it's just one of their tribal levy let's just put these to one side to remember how many have been hit and killed the other one same over here six again for a save no so that's another one killed so the barbarians have lost two the romans uh, they've taken their shock so they've got two hits and they've got medium armor so they're on fives and sixes saves there's no leaders in there so one save one kill so the romans are on six so they are just on their breaking points well just on there they they can uh, they don't have to withdraw these don't either because they've got five shock they've got seven shock one two three four five six seven eight figures are involved there so they're okay as well but they've lost by uh, one so they're going to have to withdraw no the remaining combat and i apologize until the shock exceeds the number of men so they're okay at the moment so that's just basically a draw off so we go back again we work out how many uh, dice we have so the Romans are starting with eight. Barbarians start with six. Barbarians get that extra two for their leader. The Romans are drilled. So they get an extra two. Uh, the Barbarians get their extra 50% of support. So that's another one. Don't know why they've suddenly got so many more. Uh, they won the last round of an unbroken combat, so I probably didn't include them in the last in the last roll, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I probably didn't. Oh well. Uh, the Romans have won the last round of the combat, so they get an extra two. There's no fervor, but we do remove shock now. So the room, the barbarians take three off. That'd be why it was. It was because of the shock. The Romans take. Uh, three off as well because of their shock and there's nothing else yeah I think I must have missed out those extra three dice for the barbarians by the looks of things in the last in the last roll should we just do them just to make sure fives and sixes we're looking for less so one hit five and six it's a save it may change everything no it's killed actually so now the Romans it was a draw, so the Romans will actually retreat, so we can ignore all that. Sorry about this, as I say, this is a learning game. So the Romans will retreat one inch because of that. Uh, they are now in excess shock. So one inch back. There, there. So we started a new turn, and I pulled the first card, and it's a Signa card, and it's a blue one for the... the uh, the barbarians so i'll just show you what happens here literally when a signa card comes up it is passed over to the uh the owner they hold on to it if they don't use it by the end of the turn it goes back into the deck it's that simple so we'll just so now we've got the barbarians leader four which i believe is their skirmishes okay we've got the skirmishes they're just over there again sling in there uh their bolts over here at the Romans so fives and sixes not a single hit so that's their turnover and you know what else I've completely forgotten to do is to do the force morale rolls <laughs> so uh, we've got quite a few to do here every time something bad happens they have to roll the force morale this, this shouldn't affect too much anyway so we've got let's do the Romans first of all we've got who we had an elite group they were pushed back by defeat in close combat uh, and they've also got a warrior group as well that were pushed back by defeating close combat. So that's all they've got. So let's do the elite group. They were pushed back first of all. So that's a two. Uh, a two is a minus one on their force morale. So that brings them down. And the uh, warrior group pushed back is a one. 
no effect, so that's okay. So the uh, warriors, the uh, the barbarians, oh sorry, we also had another warrior group as well pushed back for the Romans. So that's a two, so that is also no effect. Uh, the barbarians, they had an elite group pushed back by defeating combat. I think that's all they had. A one is no effect. So yeah, that's uh, basically the, the morale rolls for that turn. I did forget about those. Right, so we just pulled leader three out for the barbarians, so that's the guy, the tribal levy. We've got two Signa cards in hand. We've also got the Deceiver Infamy card as well, which they can use. So what they're going to do is they're going to play two Signa cards to take his uh, his level up to four, and with two of those, he will drop their shock down to five. First of all. So that's used up two of them, so basically that's the two Signa cards used up. Then he still has two uh, of his uh, his uh, activations left, so he will use the Deceiver card. They can throw an additional round of Javelin or uh, Pelum. He's throwing, getting them to, with a one initiative, he's going to get them to throw Pelum at the Romans, both groups. So we said it's one Pelum, uh, one Javelin sorry per per two men, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, rounded down is 7 javelins, it's up to 9 inches, so they're definitely there, so 5s and 6s are hits, so that's ooh, 3 hits, that was a 6, so there's the 3 hits, just take those out a second, and they are wearing medium armour, so a 6, is a kill, 4-5 is shock. So we're looking for a 5, so that's another shock on there. So that actually forces them to withdraw an inch because they are now on 5 shock against their 4. So they will fall back 1 inch. And then with his final uh, then I say we, we will do the deceiver so that will go into the infamy card, so we fire again. So how many did we say we had? We had uh, 14, so that's 7. So 5s and 6s again. So that's 2 hits this time. And with the medium armour, it's a 6 as a kill, 4 5 is shock. So no effect from the second round of firing, but at least he went in. And then he will command his troops to advance and attack. Uh, when they are moving, they can either move as a control group or as an uncontrolled mob. If they're uncontrolled, they will move uh, with two separate dice rolls on each unit that's in that mob. Uh, he's going to do a controlled move for them though, simply because I want to get them into, into action together. So we roll 2d6, and we take away the lowest of the scores. We're probably looking for at least a 3 or above here. Let's see what we get. A 5 and a 1. We take away the 1. So they can move 5 inches. So yeah, that's more than enough to bring them now into contact again. With those Romans. Ooh, these boys are falling down everywhere. Let's just get them stood up. And then they will combat with them again. So let's work out what they've got. So in this particular combat, the Ro uh, Barbarians are rolling 9 against the Romans 8. So let's see what we get. 5s and 6s. So that's 2 more shock on the Romans, 1 kill. The Barbarians, or the Romans are fighting back should I say, and they get 1 kill. Okay, so let's see what happens with that. We've got the Light Armour of the uh, barbarians, so a six, it saves, it's saved, so there's no no change there. Uh, the Romans they take their two shock, or oh, the barbarians also take shock as well for that. And I'll just put in that extra one for the Romans, so we know. There we go, seven. And their kill, they have medium armor, so fives and sixes are saves. 
Uh, so no, that's a, another kill there on the Romans. So they are now... Uh, their shock is again higher than their number of men. They have uh, four men, seven shock, so four minus five is three. So they are pushed back again. So that's another bad things happen. Roll. So let's just see what they get for that. It says warrior combat, push back in defeats in close combat. So we roll the dice, we've got three. That's minus one on the Roman. Uh, force morale bringing them down to eight now just to say over here <coughs> I just realized that these guys are actually broken because they've got 12 uh, 12 shock which is double their five men in their uh, unit so they uh, I've rolled them they moved 2d6 plus six inches back uh, away from the enemy they only rolled a 12 so they only got as far as there anyway which was the same as how much they retreated these guys over here uh, I've just taken Asterix as card leader one. Uh, he has basically all he's done is reduce the shock on these, so that's now come down to ten instead of the thirteen it was on. I've rolled the morale dice for these. They lost another force morale, so the uh, the goals are now on uh, eight instead of uh, what they were on before. Well, the barbarians pulled out leader two, so that's Oblix. He's got his mob of uh, chaps here to just basically pile into the sides of these again. I did think about attacking the Romans here, but they're still in pretty good shape. If we can wipe these out, uh, then that's going to give them a severe blow to their force morale, or at least even force them off the table. So I've added up the dice here. The barbarians are rolling 3, 6, 9, 10, 12, 13 dice. So 5s and 6s. And... That's quite a lot. So that's a lot of shock. So that's four, five hits with one kill. We'll work out that shock in a second. And the Romans, they are rolling one dice because they've been hitting the flank. So let's see what happens. That's a six, that's one shock and a kill. So the barbarians will do their uh, kills first of all. They're wearing medium armour. Sorry, light armour. So they're saving on a six. No, so that's one killed. Let's see if it's Obelix. On a one it is. No, it's not. It's one of the soldiers. We'll take him off. Put Obelix in there. So let's just put them to one side so we know how many we've hurt. So we've got our five shock on the Romans there. So that takes them now up to... Ooh, what's that? 12 and 4, 16. So they're just on double now. Uh, but they're going to have to retreat uh, anyway. They'll fall back. And their one kill, 4, 5, 6 on their armour. Save 4, so they've saved. So they've not actually uh, lost any. But they are retreating by 7, I believe. If they've got uh, 16... Two, four, six. No, they got. Sorry, they're retreating by eight. My maths are bad. So eight inches. So they are actually off the table. So the barbarians have seen them off, which is perfect. So that means they now have to do a force morale. Uh, I'm not sure if that is. They're certainly pushed back, but I. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with that being wiped out. To be honest, because. They've now been absolutely forced from the table. And let's see, so we're looking at warrior group wiped out. Four, five, six is minus two. Yes, there you go. Four, five, six, so minus two on the Romans force morale. That now drops them down to six. Not looking good for them. So Ubelix wins the day there. Okay, I've just drawn four consecutive Signa cards and of any colour. That means a random event occurs. Uh, there are two types of random events, movement and combat, and depends on what the unit, the last unit did or was involved in. Uh, in this case it was Ublix, so he was involved in a, a combat. So let's just see what happens. We roll two dice. At, uh, nine is exhausted. Both sides in the combat withdraw three inches and rally one point of shock per group. <laughs> well, one of the uh, units went off the table. Uh, so they won't be doing that, uh, but there's no shock on Obelix and his crew anyway, so they just withdraw three inches.
Right, so we've got leader three of the tribal levy. He is going to use three signa cards to pay for an aggressive attack, and they're going to try to make contact with the Roman auxiliary. So they're rolling 2d6 and removing the lowest because they're going to move in a controlled way. They need three or above to be able to make contact with the Romans, otherwise they're going to waste those signa cards. So four and a six, you remove the lowest, so six, more than enough to smash them into them again. So that's them in there. And I'll just work out the dice and we'll see what the this combat is. Okay, I've got the numbers worked out. We've got seven for the tribal levy and only three for the Romans. But let's see what, what happens. They're trying to drive them off the table at this point, the tribal levy. Uh, fives and sixes. So that's two more shock on the Romans. So that's them withdrawing again anyway. Uh, one kill and one shock. And the Romans, uh, one kill. So that's also a shock as well. So I'll put the shock on. The Romans caused one shock on the tribal levy, and they had another two on theirs. And then we'll work out our, our kills. So the tribal levy are wearing light armour, so six save, so they're saved. Uh, the Romans are wearing medium armour, so five, six, and it's a save. So they're saved as well, so no actual kills. So it was a draw, but whose uh, shock is in excess? So it's the Romans, they've got four men left, and they've got nine shock, so that means they are now retreating five inches. And they're falling back even further. And the levy, they're on seven, and they've got two, four, six, eight men in there, so they're still okay. They're really pushing those um, auxiliary troops back. And next up it's the Gaulish Slingers, so they're going to be chucking again at the Romans here. So they're looking fives and sixes, they've got one six, so that's a hit. Uh, reduces their armour down from heavy down to medium, so they need a six to kill. Uh, a two is nothing, that's a miss. But they are trying to peck away at them. Uh, we haven't seen much action, a lot of people have been reducing their uh, shock for the last couple of turns. Uh, but now I've pulled out the leader four for the Barbarians, so they're firing at the Romans on fives and sixes. And that's a load of misses for the Slingers. Our next one is the Roman leader three, so that's the Auxiliary. These are in a pretty bad shape. Any more hits and they will be off table. But they're within there with uh, their deployment zone, so they are going to withdraw from the table. So there'll be no more morale taken from them. Uh, I'm fairly certain that the tribal levy, as soon as they got a chance, they would move in and, and attack them and destroy them, and that would be more negative morale for the Romans. So they're going to do that to try to save a bit of uh, a bit of face. Right, using the signa cards, we just pull the temper fugits, tempers fugits cards. So using the signa cards now, uh, Ublix, uh, the the Romans turned to the ch charge of the uh, barbarians, but the barbarians got the jump on them and they basically were able to close the gap and get in on the Romans. So I've worked out the numbers, we've got this unit fighting against the uh, the veterans and this unit fighting against the Roman legions. So I've done the numbers for the first couple, so let's work these out. Fives and sixes, this is the barbarians. That is six shock of which four are kills. So that's, uh, that's a really good result that for the barbarians. Just put that there for a second. And the Romans fighting back. This is their numbers. They have got one, two, three shock with one kill in there. So the barbarians have got two further already. Let's just work theirs out so that drops them down to one shock. And then they've got that one kill, so let's see who that is. There's no leaders in there. They've got uh, medium armour on, so five and six. And no, that's not saved, so that's one dead. So let's put them there so we remember. Now the Romans, so they've already got four shock. So that's now gone up to ten. Uh, this may push them back, so this is going to be a bad things happen roll. So that's ten straight away. And then, as we said, we've got the four kills as well. 
So we roll for those. They're in heavy armour though, so 4, 5, 6 is a save. Of which 2 are saved, 2 are killed. Let's see if it's their leader. 1 or a 2 and he is. No it's not, so it's just 2 of the legions. However, that has really reduced them, so the barbarians have actually won that. Uh, 1 to 2. So they now have to withdraw uh, for 1 inch of their excess shock. They're actually they're broken because there's only 3 in there. So they are now broken. So they will just retreat 2d6 plus 6 inches away from the enemy. So let's see where they end up. That is 8 <coughs> plus 6 is 14 inches away. So that's at the village almost. But they don't want to be, they can't be within four inches of the enemy, so they've ended up miles away. Now the, they will follow up two inches, I kept forgetting to do that previously, but there we are, uh, because they won. So that's them done. So that's the elites smashed up. So let's see what the, uh, the other unit does. So we're starting with eight for the warriors. We've got Ublix in there, for that's another two. Uh, they have no other signa cards or drills or anything. They haven't. Uh, they haven't got a supporting group because it was fighting. There's no fervor on them, and that's all it is. So and this one may not be as good as the previous attack, but let's just see. Uh, get our fives and sixes out. So that's four kills. So that's that has forced them to retreat because they've already got. Four shock, so that's now become eight shock. They've not broken, but they will fall back. We'll do those kills in a second, but let's see how many they get back. So they've got two, two, four, six men in there, so they will be retreating two inches because of their excess shock. So let's see how many, how much damage they do back in their fight back. One, two. Ooh, even worse. Uh, that's four, so that's four shock and only one kill. So the barbarians have already got one fervor, so they will take an two shock and one kill. So let's work out these kills. So the barbarians wearing medium armor, five or six, and they're saved. No. Is it Obelix? A one and it is. No, it's not. So let's put these to one side. And then the Romans, they're saving on four, fives and sixes. They've also got a leader in there. Oh no, that's three killed. Uh, so one, two or three, and that's the leader killed. No, it's three of the legionaries. One, two, three. So they fall back for every point of shock on the fighting group if warriors or two inch if levy, so they've got eight, so they're going to fall back eight inches. However, there is only now three men in that, so they are also broken, so they're falling back and then also retreating as well. So we'll see how far they retreat. Well, they retreat instead of falling back, so let's do that five, six. So they're actually falling back 11 inches, uh, not the eight, so another three. So they are also scattered over there. We've now got to do the bad things happen roll because we've got two warriors broken, one of them elite. Uh, so uh, warrior group is broken, so four, five, six is two off. So that's two off their uh, force morale. And then the other one is elite warrior uh, broke, uh, breaks or wipes out. And a one is two off, so they've lost three off their force morale. So the Romans are now down to one, two, three. They're actually on three now for their force morale. They are very close to, to losing this game right now. Right, in this turn, the Romans have managed to actually reduce quite a lot of their shock, but they've now come under fire again from the uh, Slingers. They're rolling fives and sixes to hit. So let's see, so that's two hits. Uh, they're hitting against the uh, medium armour because it reduces from heavy. So six is a kill, four five is shock. So we're aiming at the front unit. 
Uh, four five is a shock, so that takes their shock back up to five. So they're going to have to withdraw with the excess shock that they've just taken because they were stood still, so they're now moving two inches back, so they're going to have to fall back, but they're going to have to interpenetrate the unit behind them. That would cause them shock normally, but they will spend one of their cards, their Signa cards, to stop that from happening. Okay, the Barbarians came up. It was Oblix's turn, so what he's done is spent Signa cards on the step out, which gave them an extra d6 of movement. Uh, this unit were unable to make contact with the Romans here that they were trying to attack in the rear. However, this unit was able to make contact and they've contacted the veterans in the rear. So they are rolling 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 dice against the veterans, 1 dice because they've been hit in the rear. So let's see what happens. 5s and 6s. Uh, 3, so that's 3 shock. They've already got 5, so that has broken them. So they will roll and the bad things happen. But let's just see what happens with these. Uh, with a attack back. So that's one shock on the Barbarians, and we said three on the Romans there, so that's they're now on eight against their three figures in there. There was no kills that time. And they are broken, so again they are going to be withdraw uh, 2d6 plus 3 inches. So that's 5 plus 6 is 11 inches away, so they're way over there in the cornfields now. I'm not going to allow them to go into the village because there will be the village women there standing, bellowing at them, uh, so they won't go anywhere near it. However, that is an elite group broken. So we roll again, see what they get. A 2 is minus 2 on their force morale, which brings them down to 1. And I think... Although you really should go until the force morale drops to zero, I'm going to leave it at that because it will just become a slugging match otherwise. And I'm going to say that the Romans have been defeated quite really little because the next turn would be would see that these uh, either the tribal levy over there or Obelix and his crew would get in and smash these as well, and it would just be uh, a massacre. Right, so a quick roundup, uh, Asterix. And his mob, they were over here, they were trying to reduce their uh, their uh, their shock so they could get back into the fight in the marshes. Uh, Oblix, being the man of the match, for sure, not only smashed uh, one or two, well, actually three Roman units, really, really smashed them up there. They, they are now scattering into the cornfields to disappear forever. Uh, the other guys, they will be hit in the rear as soon as possible, straight away with the uh, barbarians coming up behind them. And they've also got the slingers on their flank as well, threatening to uh, do some damage as well, even just reducing shock would, at this point, would be uh, critical. Over here, the tribal levy forced the, uh, the other Romans, the auxiliary, off the table, uh, which was great for them. And... Uh, that's been it really, That's, there's not a great deal more to say, the Romans didn't really hardly get off their starting point before they were ambushed. Those ambush points are pretty tricky when it comes to playing as the Romans, uh, you really have to watch them and you have to, I think, paying for scouts and for um, exploratores at the start of the game is going to be worth its weight, even if you have maybe less troops on the table you will certainly be able to close down some of these um, ambush points. And that is a it's a tricky thing. Even in my tester game, the ambush point was the uh, was the game winner. So yeah, fantastic. Really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Obviously, I've made loads of mistakes throughout this. Um, happy to talk about it in the comments. Uh, please leave me some comments if you've enjoyed it. Uh, give it a like, give it, give it a share, and uh, if you haven't already, please... Do subscribe to the channel because there will be more Infamy games coming up in the future now that I've got it and I've got the forces ready. So thanks again for watching.